Section 16.2 is on page 957, talks about vector fields and line integrals. It also includes work, circulation, and flux. We start off with a vector field, something we're going to use all throughout chapter 16. A vector field is a function that assigns a vector to each point in its domain. Vector fields represent a wide variety of applications such as force fields, vector fields, uh, velocity fields, gravity, dot, 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 has so much more. Streamlines, airflow, you name it. A vector field has three components. The book is consistent with those. Anytime the book talks about N, they're talking about the J component, P, the K component, and the I component, M, and where these are continuous and differentiable. And given a differentiable function, f, we are recalling how to find the gradient. Remember what that is, the partial of f with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, the partial with respect to z. We did that on the last exam, and so on and so forth. The gradient field gives a vector pointing in the direction of greatest increase of f, the magnitude being the value of the directed derivative in that direction. A quick reminder of how that works. I want to look at page 986. And I want to look at the following problem. It says, find the gradient. The gradient of G is simply the partial with respect to X, the partial with respect to Y, and the partial with respect to z. And there it is, nothing more. I'd like to do another example, but hopefully we'll remember this. Next, we have the following definition. It says, let f be a vector field with continuous components defined on a smooth curve, which means they're differentiable, and a parametric representation of those parameterized by r of t, t is between a and b, then the line integral of f along c, recall what t is, t is r prime of t divided by magnitude of r prime of t, a unit tangent, do you remember that? That is basically the derivative of r over the magnitude, which is the s, right? Remember that, the square root of the components? So, if I take this, I could replace it by dr over ds, and you notice that those cancel out, and this is what we get. And this has another name. This is also called the work done by a vector field along C. So anytime they ask the work, that's really what we're doing. And an example of that, problem number 7 through 12, it says, find the line integral of f from the origin to 1, 1, 1 over each of the following path in the accompanying figure. Well, all right. And here we are. So I want to find the integral along C of f dot dr and that would be the integral and let's see how this works f i need to make a small substitution and that's always the case that is the i for the i right so that would be t for x and t for the x as well do you notice Oh, they're all T, so that's not going to matter much in this case. So those are really T squared, T squared, T squared. Well, that's okay. A simple case in the first. So that is T squared, T squared, T squared. So first we figure out what that is, right? Dot it with dr. How do you find dr? Well, there's r. What is dr? Isn't that 1, 1, 1?
and that is going to run from with respect to t from 0 to 1 right there this is following path c1 this straight path right and that works out to be the integral from 0 to 1 of t squared plus t squared plus t squared dt that is 3 add 1 to the power divide by that evaluated from 0 to 1 that is simply 1 along path 2 well this is going to change slightly now along path 2 we are taking this curve and along path 2 I need to modify f accordingly saying well my f now would be in place of x I'm going to put a t in place of y I'm going to put a t squared and in place of z I'm going to replace z by a t to the fourth so if I multiply those I'm really looking at t cubed t to the sixth and t to the fifth so again depending on the path f will change accordingly and now if i say what's the integral of f dot dr well the same as before that's the integral i notice it's running from zero to one f is t cubed t squared t to the fifth that's six dot it with dr and in this case do you see what dr is isn't that one two t and four t cubed dt and I assume you could do this. That's the integral from 0 to 1. Dot product, that's t cubed plus 2t to the 7 plus 4t to the 8 dt. And you work those out. Add 1 to the power, divide by each one of those. And you should get 17 over 18. I'll elaborate on what all of that means once I'm done with the third part. Let me get that out of the way. And on part C... I'd like to figure out the path along C3. C3 is that path. Then I want to follow by C4 along this path. How much work is needed to accomplish that? Along this vector field, well, the same. I will get F, which is the vector field, and I need to figure out what that is, right? For C3, I notice R is uh, so Z is on the floor I notice that I'm gonna go T and T and let T run between 0 and 1 and for C sub 4 I'm gonna say R of T is and let's see how that works so X is 1 Y is 1 and Z varies from 0 to 1 there are more than one way of doing this and now if I start with figuring out how that works well I need to substitute f accordingly f was x y y z and x z so the way this is going to work I'm going to say the integral along c of f dot dr is going to equal the integral along c1 right of f dot dr plus the integral along c2 i'm sorry they, they said c3 c3 along c4 of f dot dr and elaborate on what all of that means well here this is going to be the integral they're both from zero to one in this case a lot of times that's not the case well what's going to be f if I have z being 0, that means that's a 0 and that's a 0, no? So that's quick. And this is x, y, t times t is t squared. Dot it with, what would be the derivative of that? 1, 1, 0, dt. And here, since I have both x and y being 1, so that's a 1, that's a 1 right there. Altogether, it's a 1. 
that's a one that's z and i'll get to that in a minute and this is oh crap that is a one z but z is t and this is one times z z is t dot it with zero zero one dt so all together this is the integral from 0 to 1 of simply t squared dt plus this is the integral of 0 plus 0 plus t dt from 0 to 1 so that is t cubed over 3 right and since they're the same I could combine them evaluate from 0 to 1 so that is 1 third plus 1 half which is 5 6 so basically it does make a difference which path you take you know, different path occur, less work. Keep in mind, the least amount of work is no longer the shortest distance. Depends on the field. If you're working, if you're swimming opposite of a current, it doesn't matter. The, it, 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 distance is not the only thing that's really affecting how quickly you're going to get there and how much work is needed. But the current as well. If you swim with the river or against the river beating, you could be swimming upstream at a rate of 2 miles per hour, and if the current is moving at two miles per hour downstream, you'll be working, but you're steady. You're not moving. Altogether, the work will be zero. They cancel out. So vector fields are going to add a new flavor to the problems. And find the line integral along C. This is another problem. Sometimes they only want a component. They mean by that dr is zero dy. That's really what that means. But we don't need to worry about that yet. For now, we just look at that say, okay, look, this is the integral. They gave us c, right? I could write that as a vector if I want. There's no point in doing all of that, right? I could do that. Or I could just say, hey, that is the integral from 0 to 1. I, uh, from 1 to 2, I need to convert that in terms of t. That's all. x, which is the i component, is right there. y, which is the j component, that's t squared. And I just need dy. dy in this case will be 2t dt. And that's pretty much it. It's really straightforward. This will be 2 dt. So that's 2 times t evaluated from 1 to 2. That is simply 2 times 1, which is 2. We're not concerned with units or anything like that yet. And if I look at the last problem, they give me R of T, right? So here they kind of multiplied those for me. Um, I'll mention that when we get there. Part B, I keep on saying that. I'm going to integrate from 0 to pi. And X, Z, well, X is right there. Z component is right there. And when they say dy, do you know what they're talking about? They're talking about the derivative of that, which is the cosine of t dt. And you proceed, that would become the integral from 0 to pi of negative cosine cubed of t dt. And if you recall how to do that, you save a cosine of t out. And the remaining cosine squared, you say that's 1 minus sine squared of t, right? 0 to pi dt. You let u equal sine of t du will be the cosine of t dt and if i put zero i get zero you work this out and this ends up being a zero right this is the integral of one minus u squared du when you integrate that you can get a zero the answer doesn't really matter much it's the setup and the work i'm going to continue this in the next video and i'm going to elaborate on what these mean a bit more